Mr. President, the text that has been proposed by the Arab and the Islamic countries in L25 is a humanitarian text. It seeks three simple things. One, an immediate cessation of hostilities, a ceasefire. Second, the provision of urgent humanitarian relief to the besieged people of Gaza. And third, a stipulation against the further displacement of the two million people in Gaza, trapped between Israel's bombs and its tanks. Mr. President, the co-sponsors of L25 have been circumspect in the language that has been used in document L25. The document has not condemned Israel by name. And this has been a deliberate act of moderation on the part of the sponsors. Because if one were to see the situation that is on the ground with Israeli bombs that are there for 20 days against the helpless Palestinian people, with 7,000 men, women, and small children, half of them children, killed by Israel in the last 20 days, 17,000 injured, 1.1 million Palestinians displaced. The enormity of the crimes that are being committed by Israel against the Palestinian people are so great and enormous that it is amazing that when my friend from Canada insists on naming the organization Hamas, that he does not feel the need for the equity and balance and fairness for which Canada is so well known. He does not feel the need to name Israel for killing 7,000 Palestinians and injuring 17,000. Only Hamas. Is this balance? He says what needs to be named has to be named. We believe Israel needs to be named. If you are fair, if you are equitable, if you are just, you will not blame one side and not the other. And if you were to go back to the issue of who started this, we all know who started this. It is a 50 years of Israeli occupation and the murder and killing of Palestinians with impunity that started this. When you push a people into the corner, they will respond. This is what the Secretary General said. It did not happen in a vacuum. And look at the reaction that, was, that came from the Israeli representative, insulting the Secretary General, calling for his resignation. They can't face the truth. They can't face justice. They can't fair face the fact that the, crime, that the crime has originated with the Israelis. The Israeli occupation is the original sin in this case. It is not what happened on the 7th of October. That is the proximate cause. But the real cause is the occupation of Palestine. Mr. President, it was not our purpose to name anybody in this text. 
My colleague from Canada says, well, the hostages, they, we don't speak of the hostages. The text does speak in balanced terms for the release of all who are held against that will. But not only the Israeli hostages, also the Palestinians. They have the same rights. They are human beings too. And if you only focus on your kids and kin in Israel and forget the Palestinians because they are different. Are they people of a lesser God? I think if Canada was fair, if Canada was really equitable, it would agree either to name everybody, both sides who are guilty of having committed crimes, or it would not name either, as we chose in L25 not to name anybody. But if the Canadian amendment passes, Pakistan will withdraw its co-sponsorship of L25 and we will submit an amendment to the text of the resolution which will strongly condemn all indiscriminate attacks by Israel, the occupying power, against the Palestinian civilian population. That, I hope we will have the opportunity at the appropriate time to do so. But my appeal to all member states here is not to support the one-sided Canadian amendment, the unequal Canadian amendment, the unfair Canadian amendment. We urge you not to show that you are biased against the Palestinian people who have suffered 50 years of occupation, that you are even-handed, that you will either name both or you will name neither in this draft resolution. Our purpose is to stop the fighting. The fact that we have reports today that the Israelis have gone on the ground into Gaza, which will escalate the fighting. It is all the more reason for this General Assembly to pass a resolution which is unequivocal in calling for a halt to the fighting, to the hostilities, and that is what we must do this afternoon. I thank you, Mr. President.